If you're anything like me, you grew up loving OutRun and found yourself constantly looking for driving games to fill the void that series left behind. 80s Overdrive looks to help fill that void with its neon-singed aesthetic, Ferrari lookalikes, and branching pathways. It certainly looks the part, but just how good of a job did Insane Code do at capturing that special OutRun magic? Well, they very kindly passed along a code so we can take a look and get those answers. So, let's hop in. 80s Overdrive released this week for the Nintendo Switch, but if you keep an eye on this genre, you may actually recognize this as a late 2017 3DS release. This new Switch version appears to largely be the same game, just in 1080p instead of having a smaller resolution and taking advantage of the 3DS's 3D feature. The game is cheaper on 3DS if that impacts your decision at all, just to make sure I'm throwing it out there. So no matter which version you opt for, what you're getting are two game modes as well as a level editor. Let's start there since I'd like to clarify the depth it has up front. 80s Overdrive's level editor lets you select from one of the game's eight visual backdrops and customize your level with various sliders, impacting various aspects of the road like the amount of turns, how harsh those turns are, the amount of traffic, the likelihood of police officers out on patrol, etc. This isn't a full-blown piece-by-piece track editor by any stretch, but what's here is still nifty. Once you've moved the sliders to your liking and named the level, you can share the code with other people who have purchased the game and they can drive on your level. A little bit of the magic goes away once you realize these codes are very likely predetermined and not unique to you specifically due to the usage of preset sliders, but honestly the feature is very welcome and one I bet kids especially would get a kick out of. So what really matters next then is how it feels to drive on those roads you're creating. The answer is, uh, well, it feels fine but I was hoping it'd feel a bit better. But I need to convey my bias up front and say I'm super used to OutRun's handling. It's hard to convey, but turning left and right doesn't feel as tight as I would like it to in this game. Part of this is due to the handling of the cars, which can be upgraded over time, more on that later, but another aspect to it is how much you have to commit to an input before the game registers and executes upon that command. I'm going to do my best to convey this with a video, but in OutRun it's possible to make a lot of twitchy, fine adjustments left and right to avoid traffic by very lightly tapping on directional inputs when playing on home versions. In 80s Overdrive, the dead zones for an analog stick are surprisingly wide, meaning you have to push the stick very far for it to register any input. Similarly, when playing with a directional pad, you have to push down and commit to a turn, which always sets you off to the left or right quite a ways, meaning it might take you some practice to get used to so that you can efficiently dodge incoming traffic and avoid damaging your car or spinning out. I'm being a bit nitpicky here, granted, and I did get used to this eventually, but I do believe it impacts the feel of the game in a negative way, and that perhaps with some adjustments, it could feel much better to drive. So looping back around to the upgradable car parts, one of the two game modes in 80s Overdrive is a career mode that sees you participating in races around this island to earn cash prizes. You start off with enough money to buy one of two starting cars out of a total of six, and then pay entry fees to enter into each race. The better you do, the more money you earn, and the more points you win to unlock further races. There's a fair bit of game mechanics vying for your hard-earned dosh, however. You have a gas meter that will need to be refilled, a damage meter that racks up as your car gets bumped into, a one-time nitrous purchase, a one-time purchase of a police scanner, and then multiple upgrades for three categories handling, acceleration and top speed, and lastly your car's ability to take hits. On top of all of this, those upgrades don't carry between the cars you buy, though they mostly start out upgraded to varying extents already, so yeah. Deciding what to spend your earnings on in career mode is a nice change of pace for this genre that I appreciate. It's going far to say that this game demands a kind of strategy to execute these decisions well, but it isn't overly intrusive and was fun to interact with as I was going through the races. That said, I mostly wound up just upgrading my first car and sticking with it, spending smaller amounts of money more often to juice up my car instead of saving up for a better car. Once in a while, the game randomly throws a challenge at you from this CD motherfudger who asks for things like collecting a few items littered along a racetrack, for you to crash into another racer, or to simply come in last place to not interfere with his racers. Doing so generally pays out pretty well and helps change things up a little bit, so it's another nice touch. 
This career mode unfortunately falls apart a little bit due to either needing to grind out races quite a bit at times, or, referencing the control issue I mentioned, having sections of races where the road gets too narrow and cluttered, making dodging traffic feel unfair instead of manageable. There's a sort of Mario Kart effect in Play 2, where crashing and spinning out can drop you from 1st to 6th place in no time flat. Any time a course in this game goes down to 3 lanes, I just feel a bit frustrated. Even with my car's handling tuned to maximum, I just can't reliably deal with traffic. Braking is a natural response here, you would think, but you can get spun out from cars you can't see behind you catching up and ramming into you, so it almost feels like luck sometimes that's just letting you get by unscathed. Not to mention the game's police officers, which speed past you from behind and break in front of you to try to make you crash. That's a fine enough mechanic on wider roads, but it just all adds up in these narrow passes. Fortunately, this is mitigated a bit by a very generous restart system. Surprisingly, it doesn't charge you any currency to restart a race during it. You don't have to repay the entrance fee or anything, so you can restart races to your heart's content to get the result you desire. It's not an ideal solution to the issue, but it's one I'm glad exists. Ultimately, the career mode is entertaining enough to grind through, but it didn't capture me as tightly as I was hoping it would going in. It's definitely still fun selecting upgrades for your cars, and the racing overall is solid enough, however. Those upgrades and purchased cars also carry over into the game's other, more familiar mode, Time Attack. This mode sees you running through the game's environments, and then selecting one of two branching paths at the end to take you to another environment, taken straight out of OutRun. No races against other drivers or items to pick up, the goal is simply to see how far you can get and how long you can last against the game's timer. A fun twist implemented here is a near-miss mechanic. Dodging other vehicles will grant you additional seconds to your timer depending on how close you are to them. You can't cause vehicle damage to your cars in this mode, so if you're like me and had some difficulties breaking your muscle memory to adapt to this game's dodge feel, this is a good mode to practice in. It really can go on for quite a while, too. I hit just short of 15 minutes here, but I felt like if I applied myself more, I could easily have hit 25 minutes. That may feel a bit long to the average person, but there's something weirdly addictive about seeing how far you can get, and it's in this mode where 80s Overdrive worked for me the most, becoming my favorite part of the package and the one I'll likely return to the most. In wrapping up here, I'd like to add that I did jive with the aesthetic here. It feels a bit gaudy at first glance, but as I played more, I found that I enjoyed the extreme 80s vibe of everything. That said, of the eight environments, there's one that just might need some retuning. There's some autumn forest scenery filled with trees on trees on trees. I don't think the colors go together here that well, but beyond that, I swear all of the trees make the game stutter a bit visually. It doesn't impact the gameplay really, but it crossed the line into disorienting for me at times, especially during turns, and really just wasn't pleasant to experience any time it popped up. If this game does get a patch to fix some minor issues, I hope they can steady the frame rate in these levels some to match the rest of the game. On the sound front, I liked some of the music. I, I wasn't too attached to much of it, but I do have to give big praise to being able to switch between the songs and the stage themselves. Picking the music you're driving to is a huge outrun staple, and this feels like the obvious next step that I'm surprised that series never did. This is a small touch, but it's a really great one. So all in all, I felt I was ready to love 80s Overdrive more than I actually did. It's a pretty solidly built game with some neat ideas, only let down by a few annoyances that hamper an otherwise enjoyable experience. If you've played OutRun and Horizon Chase Turbo to death on your Switch already, I think this game is worth a shot. The campaign mode will give you a few evenings of fun, and you just might wind up finding the time attack mode addicting too. Otherwise, that about wraps things up here. Thanks again to Insane Code for letting me give the game a spin, and as for me, if you want to hear me talk about another game like this, I'll have a link to my Sega Ages Outrun video down below for you to click. Otherwise, thanks for dropping by, and do take care. My patrons help keep this channel going, and if you'd like your name here, do consider kicking a buck my way like these fine folk have. Particularly Buckles Chucklow, The Legend of Groose, Potato Jello, Goldstorm07, Patrick Thompson, Jeet, Calico Plus, The Crazy Even, and Svendelica. Thank you.